It is time for an absolute beauty of a matchup. We've got a banger here on our hands. A battle for the number one seed, NYSL versus Ultra. And Joe, I, I can't wait to get into it because it's one we've been wanting to see. Yes, we saw the teams play ages ago, but not in this current form, not with these rosters. Let's talk about what's at stake, Joe. Yeah, I mean, for both of these two teams, you win and you're the first seed. You get that, you know, winner's round one bye, which is so important. But there's also something else added to this. You know, if you're Dallas and Florida, you're watching this very closely. Yeah. Florida, you're rooting for NYSL. Dallas, you're rooting for Toronto Ultra because that gets you into the top three. That gets you that winner's round one. Well, let's get to our Astro social soundboard that sort of tells that story. Uh, Caesar Bueno uh, slid into Clay's DMs this morning. He's asking if he needed anything for breakfast, uh, if he needed a smoothie, any food. He's really trying to make sure Clay is dialed in because on the Mutineer side, you are desperately rooting for an NYSL win. That gets you into the winner's bracket. So this is fun. I mean, sometimes when we have these matches, it's just really the impact of those two teams. And we do have that here, but it's also the impact of two other teams and Mutineers and Empire. I am very, very, very excited for this one, Joe. Yeah, it's one of those things, too, where, like, you know, you have to watch if you're, like, a coach. or It's a little bit differently to be on the sidelines. Believe me, for Dallas and Florida, they would much rather be playing in this match to decide their fate. But it's, it's tough watching. It's stressful. I'm sure it's incredibly stressful, probably more than playing when you can't control your fate. Somebody else has it in their hands. But let's not... Avoid it anymore. It's time to get into this thing. Let's meet our teams. I want to start off with Toronto Ultra. Let's take a look at the squad. Bring the pain today. Excited to see what we'll get out of this squad. But Bance, Cami, Insight, and Kleenex. Joe, since they formed, they have been a treat to watch. Oh, they really have. Obviously, uh, you know, they won a major. And then throughout this stage, I think, uh, you know, quietly they've gotten back to where they are. Um, you know, back into being a, a top three team. They lose that first match to the Mutineers. After losing that game five, it's been nine straight maps in a row. And there's Bantz doing his breathing exercises, getting focused, because after that first match, Bantz has been on form. Yeah, I think that's a huge point. Yeah, just perfect after the blunder to start it. And that's what you want to see. I mean, if you start a little bit shaky, close as strong as you can. And, well, a strong series victory here could do just that leading into major four. But on the other side of it, who's trying to slow them down and secure that number one spot? It is NYSL. Let's check out the team. What a kill that was. I'll see you in league play later, boys and girls. Wait, place though, has a couple players in front. He gets the two piece, gets the third. There's the first, knows one more is inside. Fantastic movement, shots on point. Keep the streak going. It was a matter of moments before we saw this map potentially wide open. A team this stage has battled through some, some minor adversity. We think about the fact, you know, Hydra, Clay, they were under the weather. It was visible as you were watching them. And you heard a little less energy in the comms at times. But who's picked it up in a big way? Mac has been brilliant. The guy has been lights out. No, I mean, he has. Him and Hydra, especially in Hardpoint, have just been exceptional uh, to watch. But, yeah, I mean, Clay's vibing a little bit more. It seems like he's a little bit more locked in and they need to be. To me, this is just about a, as close as it gets to a major match. Well, now to our game field keys to victory. Joe, break down for me what you thought about NYSL. Well, they got to stay strong at hard point. You're going up against one of the best, if not the best, 2-3-5 team in the league. Uh, you know, their control is not there. And you can see they're 11th in defensive rounds. You're going up uh, on a garrison control where ultra, very good offensive team on that map. 
but you have to be able to lock them in. Don't give up that early momentum. And then use the preparation that we saw at the major to find openings in search and destroy. This was a team that, you know, they did that extra prep work. They countered hard. I expect to see that here today. Yeah, yeah, we saw a lot of it. The Mutineers match will still stick out to me. It's just they they, they seem far and away ahead. You could tell the prep was there with the coaching staff, and Clay has gone from uh, dancing and singing to yawning. So <laughs> I'm not sure where he's at levels-wise right now, but, you know, he's going to be ready to go. Now let's look at our game fuel keys to victory for Ultra Joe. Uh, I mean, Cam and Insight, you got to slow down Big Mac. He's got a 1.53 in Woo. stage four. I mean, that is just ridiculous, and that's what we've talked about. He has hit a form right now. They have to be there for those trades, and talk, talked about Mac with his multi-kills. Cam and Insight, the Kriegs need to be on point. Continue playing with momentum and confidence. Since that game five loss, nine and no, they have not dropped a map. That just, you know, kind of fired them back up. And then lastly, win the game three. They are undefeated in control. That is a mode that they have a clear advantage over NYSL uh, in one I think they need to lock up. You lose that one, it could get scary. So it seems like for you, it really boils down to an NYSL. Win your hard points. That's where you've been strong, you need to. And kind of the same thing on the other side. For Ultra, you've got to win that control. 100%. I think both of these teams can kind of go 50-50 in, in hard point and search and destroy. But with NYSL not... You know, being the best control team, they may have to win two somewhere. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a look at our maps and modes and how this is going to break down. And, Joe, when we first looked at it, I think the first thing you said was pretty strong maps for both teams. I mean, I you kind of expect this, right? A lot on the line here. They're going to go with the, the maps that they love to pick. And for NYSL, you're happy. That first map pick, that's an ultra map pick. Checkmate Hardpoint. You're 3-0 and right now in Stage 4. So you really got that going. With the middle of the maps, I think that's where Toronto, they have a, a strong advantage, especially that control garrison. If we get to that game five, Moscow search and destroy, that is one where NYSL, they don't have a lot of repetition on that map. Can Ultra get it to a map five? Well, we know there's already pressure on the map one. It sort of sets the tide of the series, but considering, you know, you're saying NYSL really need to take the hard points and that being you know, their pick, as far as Ultra's pick, that's gotta be a crucial one, right? Like, if you can come in and win that one, that really sets you up for success if you're in YSL. Well, 100%, and especially just because they're 3-0 they're and on it. It's not like a map pick that, you know, Ultra have been dominant on. Uh, again, they're they're right around like a 60% hard point team, where our, you know, this NYSL roster with Hydra, it's like 95% or, or so, where, wherever it's at, it's it's just ridiculous. So for Ultra to win a hard point, I, I think is just huge. Uh, and this is where you look at that map pick and checkmate. And they've had some close checkmates in the past, but it's one they've improved on a lot. They're one and zero throughout stage four, eight and six overall. But again, on the other side, NYSL, this is one they've played a lot more throughout this stage. Yeah, you mentioned being three and zero. We'll see if they can keep that rhythm. Into this matchup, a reminder, in case you're just joining us, this is the battle for who's going to be first place in the group. Also deciding the fates of Empire and Mutineers. Who's going to get off with that winner's bracket start? But Mac, Joe, while we're just getting into this, I want to talk a little bit about how ludicrous he's been. And JP tweeted us that the other day that was talking about multi-kills per 10 minutes in hardpoint. And he basically was double the second person. Like, he was getting like six per 10 minutes, which is wild. What do you think creates that kind of statistic? Well, I think there's kind of two things. I, I think maybe we've kind of talked about a, a seam not having the best stage in hardpoint, and he's finding cleanup kills from the players up front. And then secondly, he's also ready for the next gunfight, right? Like, he is winning that gunfight, and we saw that yesterday from Selium in his series, uh, and that's another, you know, flex player that can kind of do it all. But that gunny is on point at all times, and he expects it, and that's what it really comes down to for Mac. He's gotten comfortable with the Krig. His awareness is on point, and they've needed him to step, step up, and he has. Well, I think he got another one of those multi-kills, and that time it was through the SMG. But they get 24 of the opening points. Insight, though, carrying a double over into our next hard point. His Ultra have gotten set up deep here to lock down second. Start to bring this back. Okay, I mean, Insight will combine on some shots to take out Mac, and... And just with his current form, just feels like the more deaths you can give Mac, the more you can get him off the map, the better it bodes for Ultra. 100%. Again, who has to be the people to answer that, right? Who's going to be ready for the second gunfight? It is your ARs. Uh, it's going to be Cami and Insight. And Cami right now on a heater himself. Five in a row. A great position trying to play his life. But who was that? Hydra. He hits the back spawn. He hits an easy cleanup. And well, he's also able to get some of this time. So this is great for NYSL. They stopped that streak. 
And they'll work to get the final 10 or so seconds, but all the focus now will get to mid-map is our third hard point about to pop. And Cammy, well, might not get the streak, but he's right back into it. He gets a kill almost instantly coming back into spawn. And Cammy has been a treat, and Vance got a double there. You know, you talked about how good Vance has been. You know, since the opening loss, the guy's been a monster. Yeah, I think he has like a 1.2 in hard point. Um, you know, again, 9-0, and 0, their stats are going to look really good. But for Bance and a submachine gun player, that is just darn impressive, right? I mean, you know, it's similar to Hydra. That's why we were really gassing him up last stage. And again, Ultra has done this in, in a quiet way. They just sort of handled business uh, after that first match. There's been a lot of hype around Florida and, you know, a team like NYSL because of what they've done. But Ultra's just like, don't worry, we're, we're still here and we're going to show it right now. 100%. We'll see. Get a show now. I want to hear the comms of the guys. They're getting ready for this big battle for the number one spot. Let's go to an Astro listening for Toronto Ultra. It's on the left. Low left. Yeah, one comes. My one comes. He climbed up exit. There it okay. The Why is he dead? Oh, Asim new. Asim new. I've got top lane here, Jamie. They're live. Asim's dead. Top new. lane. Top lane. Hydra. Hydra. Top really lane. Top lane. Really one one lane. Hydra. Play, play that side. Top lane. Top lane. Hydra. Yeah. Top lane. Top lane. Top lane. Top lane. Top lane. Okay, Who's yeah. playing P2 Crate? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm watching. Yeah, he's still top lane. Still top lane, I think. Hydra dead. Nice, nice, nice. Go ahead and come. Yeah, yeah. I'm going top lane. I'm going top lane. Go, go, fast. Nice. 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 Wait, who is it? Clay? Clay? Yeah. yeah he's he's top lane. Top lane. Top lane. Really weak. Clay. Top lane. Really weak. They're on me again, Ben. He's holding it. He's holding it. In P2 Crate. Get back. Champ P2. Champ P2. Champ P2. They're going to challenge me, man, too. Top left. To their side. To their side. You can need that side. Need Cam's close. Need Cam's close. Hydra on the right wing. On the right wing. They will be. On their side. Look for Hydra on the plane. Yeah, I don't see him. He's on the back side. Back side. Nice. One stack. Asim. Asim's one shot. Time's dead. Nice. We can play an ult. I'm in there. I'm in there. Back on ult. Back on ult. Back on ult. One shot. One shot. Low low low. Ben. Climb the top. Yeah, he's behind. He's going to hit through the match. Yeah, you might spawn out. Yeah, I'm gonna spawn out. No, 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 we're gonna spawn out. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help I'm playing back left. Back left, Mac. Back left, Mac. Back left, Mac on me. That's what I was gonna do. Ah, okay. I'll look at what's up. I got what's up. Mac in the back. One more. Back one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where he's gone. Inward. Inward. An exit. What an exit. Good shit. Good shit. Go, Jamie. Push out. I'm playing left. I'm playing left. I'm dead, man. Going to time. I'm going left. He's pushing the top plane. Get time. Someone plugging it. They could spawn comms. Front right. Front right. I think we're good. We're good. There's two. Two front. Two front. Then Hydra's weak. Top of the cross, top of the cross, come on, come on, come on, exit, 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 absolutely, exit, absolutely. You're in your time, Ben. Get all the time here. Yeah, in front of me. I just backed it. I, I mean, the comms were on point. It felt like maybe a little frustration setting in towards the tail end of that. I think they lost track of a player. A flurry of kills go through for NYSL, but no one's really earned time on this point. Like, no one's actually been able to get onto the objective. Yeah, I mean, just some, you know, NYSL early on because they got some kills at P4 that allowed them to get some map control towards P5. And, yeah, you know, you just heard them trying to find Clay. Clay was the one who was able to get three in a row. But I, I think it was really calm. The one player that stood out was Bans. When there was something critical to, to do, he's the one that kind of stepped up and was like, hey, you guys can need their side of the hill. We heard that really early on because he doesn't see any trophies. But, I, I mean, calm, cool, collected. That's the ultra we know. Absolutely, and uh, they're starting to push up with a bit of a lead, up 30 now. Contesting the hard points, we're into our second set of rotations. We'll see if Ultra can get the time, maybe get the flip. But for now, everybody trophies out. Just satisfied with the contest. Just trying to keep an eye on the purple arrow and who's going to start to maybe make a push, find an opening, find a gap to get through. It looks like it's going to be Kleenex that's trying to do that. For now, he's wrapped back to help his teammates as there's just a flood, a flurry of kills inside. They all go the way of subliners, even a team kill, I think, on their side as well. But that's going to get Ultra spawning out with 15 seconds left. This should put them in a good position to get the scrap time and also get a nice, nice setup for next. Yeah, I, I want to see if they can get some more kills here. Just try to stop that first push from Ultra. Maybe, you know, create those layers we kind of talk about. But Kleenex, that's going to give them playing control and some early pressure up here towards these planes. But Mac, a seam off a of spawn. They're going to deal with three. That's how you take care of that. Bant, he's just going to stay alive and back on down. Nice discipline there to wait for his teammates. But NYSL, they bounce back here at P1 and P2. Oh, okay. Speaking of the multi-kills from Mac, he just got two over that sequence. And I don't think that was cleaning up or needing help. Like, he was just beaming people, <laughs> trying to get near the point. So he's continuing to just line them up in pairs. Impressive stuff from Mac. You still have a bit of a presence, but it's getting a little bit staggered now for Ultra as they start to go a little one by one and try to get towards it. It's another multi-kill for NYSL, this time 
through a seam and it just seems like there's always another man up on the NYS nysl side to continue to hold this time yeah i know there's been a lot of uh, attention to mac but clay has really turned things around uh he was like negative four or five when we went into that listening and now he is positive six 23 kills leading the team and well they have the lead they do a very good job they get a 60 point swing at those two hills now ultra just trying to control the middle of the map this is what they did such a good job last time through on this first rotation controlling this p3 and p4 to try and set up for a p5 they can do that cleanly you get three hills in a row you're setting yourself up for success but it's difficult to do in this nysl team well that kill from a scene they'll be able to get into the point for now but the trade there efficiently and quickly from ultra is they'll still battle for some semblance of control but feels like it's kind of been a game of swings like either team just finds a pair of hard points they can chain together had several lead changes throughout it. It's just a minor lead right now for NYSL, but with those kills, the push through comes the flip. Is NYSL now spawning on the left side of the map as they all go four down? All the purple arrows having to turn their heads, try to pick this up as NYSL try to get that focus on towards our fourth hard point, but look at the numbers, look at the arrows, ultra ready to pick it up. Yeah, I mean, that's just one of those things where they find all the kills and you know, Ultra, they're pushed up in the middle of the map and they actually flipped the spawns. Uh, and no one is playing a little bit safety. They were there for the trades, but Insight, he's now on six in a row. They still have time to recover for P5. They're getting this time. Very close to being a tie game. Can Insight earn some score streaks? One more away from that artillery. He's able to get that. Now can he get the cruise? You know, it's huge. In case you don't have this spawns for the next hill, you could put it towards the front, but you see in the top left. Well, Asim is just spawn killing them. Finally, Cami is there for the trade. But NYSL behind a Mac multi kill, get right back to it. This is a really good job by Ultra picking up the flip, though. I mean, the fact that it's as clean as it was through the opening 30 seconds, and then the fact they flip NYSL back. But the problem is NYSL then are able to burst on through. Maybe behind uh, it being staggered a little bit with the reinforcements from Asim's plays and spawn. What can Ultra do to answer now? Is this back and, this and is forth where, affair and the map one continues? This is th where through the first rotation, what NYSL, they just got early pressure on this hill. And, you know, there was just time where there was enough pressure where you didn't have Ultra on the hill for that long. And, you know, the first 10 seconds, it's kind of the same thing. It's not clean. And who is it? It's Mac again, who's able to find two. He's going to try and get some angles on the players on the hill. You see what he's trying to do is Ultra... But at least able to just stay down still very much in this game as it's about to be tied up matt has to get aggressive ultra completely slow things down and clay now the last one alive finally you get a clean wipe they can relax here at this p5 yeah no I, I i don't know how many seconds were earned at p5 the first time but it was not many at all like no one was able to get in the hard point whether it was from the you know close spawn in the back or the constant pressure in the front from nysl but yeah this time you finally get that moment to take a breath collect some time and try to push open a lead of your own as Cammy keeps up the quality beams. That'll be two in a row for him as he's over the 30 mark at 31 and 26. But to Benjamin Bance we go. Inside the plane, trophy out, trying to wreak some havoc. Yeah, Ultra now with a 25 second lead. He's trying to contest numbers right now to NYSL. What can Bance do? Be able to find two, but Asim is there to trade with his sub duo in Hydra. I'm just going to get that time. You can see, I mean, look at the game clock as well. We're, we're at 28 seconds oh, yeah. left. No, I'm pretty sure it fits the first time through like a second was earned. Like they, they, There was barely anything at all. So I, I guess you can't be shocked to see that. But I, I guess it speaks more to a lot of the other hard points too, if it's whittled down that far. Well, yeah, I mean, a couple of the, you know, first hills, we've just had contests, both teams laying down. But it's Bant on a flank. He was able to give his team control. They have P2 spawns, only 17 seconds left. This is looking great for Ultra in the closing moments. Well, and that that's the thing, right? Like a 10 point lead, 20 point lead, isn't that big of a deal? Maybe if there's more time on the clock, but with only 22 seconds, that puts a lot more pressure on NYSL, right? Well, yeah, but the pressure is working out because they get up through the middle of the map quickly. Ultra players trying to stay alive in the back. You had two players spawn out, Hydra oh. and Asim, they push it. And when they needed to come up big, they do. But there's the streaks now. Insight starting to call them in. As you see the white arrow starting to scatter. Try to get to safety. It connects on one. They're able to pick up two kills behind it, but Hydra and Clay do find picks of their own. Clay gonna be the last guy here. The nade and bullet combo from Insight is up to the task to get in. The backside close spawn still there for NYSL, so the battle on the point will continue. 14 seconds on the play clock. 
15 seconds separating these two squads. We're going down to the wire, Big Joe. Yeah, and I mean, if you're NYSL, it's not like you can really contest this. And also, they just get off of it. They recognize there's only a couple of seconds left. They have the close ones. I love this play from Ultra. They get off the hill. They're slaying through the middle of the map. You take the contest. You're going to take the map win. Get off the hill. They win map one. Beautifully done. Heads up play. The objective doesn't matter at that point for them. Just get off it. Let the clock run. And yeah, I think shout out to one of our producers. I think I heard in my ear. It's only like the sixth time that's happened this year that it's going to time. So it has not been all that common, but... Yeah, a lot of contests in that fifth hard point, which is, it wasn't a contest, just nobody, nobody was in it throughout the course of it. A wild opening hard point, but it is an ultra win. And speaking to what you were talking about, the keys to victory and how important the hard points were going to be for NYSL, considering how good of a control team ultra is, to come in, get that first hard point win, it's a big one for ultra. And there you go, right? You see it right there. Five game hard point wins in a row throughout this stage. Now five and one again. And since that first series, they have been on fire. Uh, and well, there's that streak. The streak pays off as we take a look at our stats. Tammy 36, almost 7,000 damage. I mean, there were so oh. many engagements on this map. This was just a, a heavyweight battle. Yeah, it was. And this is what, you know, we we're hoping maybe we we're going to see it at the major. And now we get it here. It's two top three teams fighting for the number one spot. What more can you ask for? We love us some Call of Duty Esports. Ultra is fired up, and that'll take us to break for the Search and Destroy. The Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Well, Joe, it looks like it's shaping up for the battle we hoped it would be. What an incredible map one it was. And I, we're going to take a look at it, but like these teams, we were really excited to hope maybe they faced off the major is, you know, you kind of had the big three going into it. These guys haven't played since April. Like we're talking pre-Hydra time. So Hydra, obviously a big change for the NYSL team, but this is the last time they played. And I, I, I think some might be surprised to see that's actually an NYSL win. Yeah, what was this stage? I don't even know what stage is, stage two? Maybe? Uh, around that time? Uh, I, I don't know. It, it feels like a, a it's, long, it's a time, long ago. time ago. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, stage two. Okay, so stage two. And, you know, this is when NYSL wasn't at, like, their strongest point. Uh, so, yeah, they get that victory. But the key there to me is that they win both of those hard points. But look what they just won. Checkmate hard point is a six-point game. We had another close one right there. Uh, but now you're getting ultra territory here. And, they're, you know, they're, they're strong search and destroy team. NYSL has to bounce on back. And this is just where Ultra have just been so good, this 2-3-5 area. Someone asked me, are you sure they're great? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, stage three, even 
you know, when they got what top three, top four finish, they were eight and four in search and destroy. Two of those losses were in game fives to Atlanta phase. They were eight and one in control. They're undefeated in control. Now, yeah, the stats literally are telling me that there are two, three, and five teams. So thank you out there. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, what, where it gets interesting because I, no one would argue the fact that me and YSL are contenders. They were in the last grand final 100%, but I, I think the question still stands. Like, do they have the map pool or the depth within all game modes to beat an ultra in phase consistently? And that's something they've you know been improving on and working on. But this is a good this is a good test, right, of where you're at when you talk about the 235. And now we get into the express search and destroy. And we've seen some really good stuff here for NYSL. The same could be said on the other side. I mean, an ultra six and one, two and zero in this stage. But yeah, NYSL six and three, one and zero in this stage. Uh, also where they won that winner's final in a crazy game five round 11. So both teams, a strong search map for them, but uh, that's what you're going to kind of get where you were in the top three teams and are going to have really good records on a bunch of these maps that yeah, we're going yeah. to. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it, that's what we saw when we looked at the five maps. Like it's, it's a pretty strong series for everybody, but of course it's Mac finding multiple kills to start us off. Multi-kill Mac, we call him is he is, uh, off to a big one. Takes out Kleenex and Cammy. Gets the third, just let Mac do it all. Give him the fourth, just ego child at this point. Insight, gonna be the last guy up. I'm with Don't it. Yeah, it to yeah. Mac. Oh, it does. It's a he Mac. was shooting too. Oh, I thought it was Mac. I thought it was the nah, ace. I just stole it, stole it from him. Oh, it was a team shot. Thief. Nice yeah, shot there I... from Hydra. But yeah, Mac, Mac dictates that round, just dominates it from the catwalk. Yeah, they just go over to that control. He finds those picks three in the round for Mac. Now, Ultra on offense. We'll see what they like to do in offenses. You know, they, they, they've changed a lot. You can really kind of do what NYSL did, pick a bomb, hit it out, get the bomb down, play that sort of 4v4 retake scenario where you can wait for them to try to go on the flank, be very patient in their spawn. But it looks like it's going to be a bit of a 2-2 split. Watch that number one. That's Cammy. He's sitting catwalk stairs. And he can get aggressive on a pinch when this bomb is planted. But it's all about the timings. He's got to wait for a flank in case there's one from NYSL. But he could be the playmaker for Ultra. Well, Hydra has read this, and there is the opening pick. Another first blood for NYSL to kick off this game, too. There he goes. He's going Phoenix. right now. I'm not sure if he was the first blood of the last round, but he's been taken out of these quickly. But as you called, Cammy trying to start to develop the place. Two versus two we'll get to. Cammy will spot it. Cammy will win it. And Cammy will find a third. Joe, it's almost like you know what you're talking about. It's almost like I do, kind of, sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. I try to. But, you know, he's setting up this pitch. His teammate, they're getting the bomb down. They have to stay alive. And, you know, there's a couple of timings that could go wrong for Cammy. But he's very patient with his gunfights. He doesn't over -chal. He gets one. He backs up. And that kind of forces NYSL to say, okay, well, we have to go push a 3v2 elsewhere. And as soon as they turn around for that brief second, that's when he goes again. Beautifully done by Cammy. Yeah, I mean, there's so much pressure on that player, right? Like, it's just the decision-making, the, the, the timing you have to try and find. Not that they always decide the round, but they can there are a lot of numbers here towards the B bomb site. Finally, a first blood in for Ultra. And they turn this into more. Mac is going to peek around the edge. They're going to line up for Mac and Hydra as they'll take down two. Into another fast 2v2 we go. Bomb towards the B site. And for Ultra, a, a bit split for now. We'll see how they plan to attack this. Yeah, bomb going down. Jamie's going all the way through. Let's see. It looks like he's just going to be waiting for his teammate in Kleenex. Now, on the other side, you have Mac and Heiser. They're just going to push this two out, so they're just going to fly. They're not going to deal with any of the timings down low, but Cammy's not going to see much. So, Kleenex knows, okay, there's nothing down low. Where did they go? Well, he's able to at least – it looked like he spotted one. He's just trying to bait out the shots. I wasn't sure if he did it first, but he wins the first. Turns it into a one versus one. 17 on the clock, and Cammy will take it four in a row for Cammy. Plenty of time for the defuse. Ultra, they get it done. That's uh, just a good job. I mean, Cammy, he's not spotting anything. And when he doesn't see anything, Kleenex like, okay, they could be on the opposite side of the staircase. Uh, so he, as soon as he clears that, they know that they went for a wrap somewhere. Maybe they're sitting inside the catwalk stairs. And he's just trying to bait out the shots. You saw him sliding around that bomb. As soon as that happens, they're able to win the, out that 2v2. 
Yeah, I wasn't sure. Sometimes it's hard to tell with X-ray. Like, I wasn't sure if he spotted them or not, or it was just, you know, since that's where it was coming from based on the information. But regardless, I thought he I thought he got caught, but he gets some headshots, I think, with the 74U to win that first gunfight. Currently, Mac and Hydra accounting for all of the kills. And here's a first blood for Kleenex. What, the first two rounds? First bloods for NYSL. Now Ultra has answered back with two of their own. Oh, oh lordy. Man. You'd like yeah. that one back if you're camping. Yeah, you sure would. I mean, that's the corner you're playing, but that happens, but your teammates take care of the rest. As the team now left in a 3v1, they know his position. He's able to find the timing. Almost Ooh. hits those headshots. Just one more bullet needed. But with his back down, him being weak, this is going to allow Bands to reposition. And it looks like he picked up a Krieg as well. Just be able to look over his teammate. Yeah, I mean, someone's going to have to overchow, or he just hits the most ludicrous he headshots of the year. Take this. Jackal hit. He'll try to go behind him, but Bands still looking over. A great job in this 2v1, playing together, playing the numbers. Good little teamwork there. Just make sure he doesn't have a shot. Now, I, the key there is just that they both get away post-plant. Like, as soon as the bomb goes down, there is the chance that the team can catch one sprinting away. Uh, and as soon as Bance is able to watch over his teammate, you know, Asim is very weak. He has to slow things down. If he has some more time, maybe with that tactical as he hits that trophy away, he can kind of force that 1v1 a little bit longer and finesse it. But he knows there's 17 seconds left. I got to go. Um, just not able to, uh, to find those kills. Absolutely. Well, there's a heavy presence defensively from Ultra at the A site. He basically wide open outside of a lurking in site. This should more than likely be a fast plant in from NYSL and then the retake. And now if you're NYSL, where is this pressure going to come from as they realize they have a wide open site? Almost start to go down. And trying to find those shots on that player down low. And well, after the bomb is planted, I see him able to find the first blood. Nice shots from him. Just ready for the gunfight. Hydra finds another one. You do have Clay who's working in the middle of the map on a late flank if he needs to, but Hydra and Asim, they deal with it. Yeah, I mean, that's what back-to-back -back rounds where Asim has found uh, an opener, just won a big one-on-one, -on -one. and just good awareness. I mean, he picks Cammy, one tucked away in a corner, wins another one there, and then Hydra follows up with the next two. Lovely shots there from Hydra. And a much needed round from NYSL. Yeah, but it's, it's that first blood because, you know, there's no one else really near him on the bomb. So if Asim doesn't get away with his life, you know, that player, I think it was Kleenex, can kind of just wait for his teammates. You know, he can wait for the collapse to come in in a four on three. So beautifully done. Well, Cammy just enjoying uh, his corner. They've got up towards A. Bomb getting planted quickly. This is a similar position. This is kind of like round one, right? Where he's got this chance to pinch and make the play. We'll see if Cammy can do it again. There's the first blood. Kind of this Cammy, Cammy the versus player, Clay battle. Comes up, yeah, comes up big again. He's trying to find him, and now it's all about the players, though, on the site. They still have to worry about Cammy. They're not sure where he's going to be coming in from, but it's into a three on three. Cammy's going to be the first one to check the bomb. A great time as he finds three. Can he find the ace? Matt trying to get away him. with his life. Give I don't think him. so. The pistol hits. So what? Uh, in those two very similar looking rounds, uh, Cammy gets, I believe, three in the first. He gets the full ace here. Seven kills through two offensive rounds where he's that island player. Just terrific stuff. But now I guess, Joe, I got to ask you. It's twice it's happened when they go to that setup. How do you deal with that a little bit better if you're in YSL? I think you just kind of have to execute on it. You have to let him be. You have to leave him. Uh, or you can trade it really quickly. There's kind of two things. Uh, both times you had a seam, won the one-on-one. -on, -one. on the, the the next round that we just watched, Clay played for it. He just didn't expect him to be down low. So now they can either bully him through the flank and at least try to get a trade to make it a three-on-three, -three, or you just leave him on an island. All right, well, we'll see. Uh, we get back to that similar setup, what the case will be. But Cami is out to nine and three. There he gets to 10, but... The trade is there, and Mac finds a second behind it. Suddenly, insight left by his lonesome. The bomb has not been planted yet. Still a chance here for some late-round heroics. Not anymore. 
<laughs> position given up and quickly they will slide out and find it is NYSL doing their best to stay close. I feel like there's been, you know, two, two opportunities where Ultra could kind of run away with it, like a three round edge. They haven't allowed it. And there's one of those multi kills. And you kind of saw it. One, one man runs on in. They lose that gunfight. Max is there for the trade, but then it's the second gunfight. He's just so aware of his position, how to get the advantage in the gunfight. He has his teammate backing him up. That also helps, but I mean, he's just, you know, he's kind of just flowing, man. Like, he's confident in his gameplay. He knows what he needs to do. You're seeing it every single game mode. You're seeing it here in map two. This looks like it might be similar, a uh, little bit different from Cami. It's a much more delayed push towards that side. Oh, never mind. They're going to wrap mid. I thought they were going towards A with that kind of default push again, but they, they actually wrap back towards Cami. Dance will find the first pick. A seam through to follow it up for NYSL. And where do they go with bomb? Dance has bomb all the way towards like the back ramp for NYSL. It's going to be probably on Cami again to maybe make the play. If he can even get there in time. Yeah, there's just so much movement on both sides. Uh, there's still time to work with. They can rotate out of this, and I think they will. Uh, both oh, sorry, that was inside that was there to... on the ramp. That's my bad. Yeah. I thought that was Cami in the same spot. They they were through towards defensively. Try to go down low. I see him tried playing his life, but he gets pushed out, and now it's going to be an A plant. You're into this 2v2. I just, like, assumed it was him because that's where he's been so often. Yeah, and, and kind of what we saw was, or what we expected adjustment-wise, it happened on the other side. Clay was the one who got isolated. You know, they tried to get aggressive at A with three players. And, you know, they at least able to make it a, into a two-on-two. -two. But, uh, again, 18 seconds left before you even start the engagements. Cami, fans, able to win those gunfights. They come up clutch. They get us one round from a 2-0 edge here for Ultra. Beautiful reposition, and yeah, good job by Bance just not trying to take that first gunfight. I mean, with the way Max has been shooting, the fact he had a Krig, he got that information, he backed down and repositioned. It's more than likely you're getting just beamed if he overstayed his walk by a bit, so good job. Giving himself a more favorable one-on-one. Favorable -on -one. Now NYSL are going to have to rip off three straight. I think Bance was on a goose egg before that round, so nice little bounce back from him. Yeah, Clay on the other side with one, but they're just going to go for a, a standard push. But it trades out both sides. Mac with a big trade. Kleenex almost finds three. Asim opens up the round. And we're into a one-on-two. Cami, the map he has been having. Let's see if he can make another play. What timing does he get? Not able to finish the kill on the Clay. If he finds that, it might happen. But Clay just able to get around the corner. And that's sort of, uh, I mean, one way to do it, right? Like... Get that big battle to go down before Cammy has a chance to get there. Right? <laughs> like there, it all happens so fast. You trade efficiently, and you know it's still another five seconds before Cammy can really get into the mix. I know that's on the opposite side of it, obviously, offense versus defense, but still, he's playing that kind of island role. I'll see what they do. So it looks like they're going to go back to this two-two split. The last time they played very aggressive towards A. They're going to play aggressive uh, again. And instead of Clay being on an island, you have a seam here. He's ready for the catwalk push. This is a nice read, nice adjustment from NYSL. They read that perfectly. What they wanted to do. Clay, he is going to get spotted, but Insight's just going to back on up. They're going to tape bomb. And now, Ultra, there's still a minute to work with. As they start to go towards A. Yeah, I mean, that's it's identical to their last offense, right? A nice adjustment there. NYSL get the first pick. I'll see if Ultra can get this down. Looks like he started to, and then I don't know if he didn't trust in the trophy, or maybe there's an angle for shots to come in, but he'll hop off it for now. Or just didn't like the information he got. Insight, though, with a big pick to bring it into a three versus three with 30 seconds left to go. Are they going to rotate this again? Cammy saw one player go up catwalk stairs, and I thought they were thinking about it. As Insight finds the kill on the clay, we're into a two versus three. Not a lot of time to work with. It feels like they're trying to fake out NYSL that they rotate it back to B. And well, Kleenex, maybe he gets the timing. Insight's going to spot another one. And just oh, like no. that, it's Hydra all by his lonesome. Things fall apart for NYSL. Is down a man. Ultra able to bring it back and close it out 6-4.
incredible stuff, and I, maybe that one-on-one -on -one it comes down to. I mean, lose that, obviously. It's done. Big gunfight win from Kleenex. Insight through on the picks. Impressive round victory, considering the clean first blood from NYSL. And you just saw, they, 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 they took their time, very disciplined. They knew how much time was on the clock, and they just got NYSL to, to overthink a bit. Um, you, you know, they left two players at that site, and as you said, I think the gunfight went on to Max, secures them that round. But the fact is, is a seam left. He went catwalk stairs, insights like, all right, I'm gonna wait for this. He times it perfectly. That leaves Hydra in that one on two. Just a minute miscommunication there from NYSL. They were adjusting well. But Ultra with that early lead, some big plays out of Cami, 11 kills from him to put them up 2-0. Well. Yeah, I mean, the fact is you'd win both those one-on-ones, right? But uh, yeah, it, that was a real uh, hotly contested gunfight you had with Kleenex. Able to take it, they get the victory. And for a U.S. Army tactical play, I'm imagining we're probably going to take a look at the Cami Ace. As he had a couple of really impressive rounds where he was playing at the offsite, found the timing, came up clutch for the squad. Some really, really impressive rounds. I mean, through two rounds, he was able to get seven kills. Yeah, so this round, Clay's playing for it. He's just playing it at an off angle. He's waiting for him to, to leave catwalk, but Cami goes down low through that terminal. Clay doesn't expect that. And now you're left with a choice. Do we wait for Cami here in this three-on-three -three to try to make a play? You can see his Hydra's just waiting for his health to, to regen, but they know that Cami could come from catwalk, top train, mid train. There's all these positions. And while he gets through the middle of the tracks, he's able to find two as they get pushed up. And then this ace with the pistol, Great individual plays out of Cami. Yeah, sometimes it's a little, little bit of luck, a little bit of magic. There he found a very nice time. He's getting behind the players from the bomb. But beautiful stuff from Cami and Ultra as they celebrate the map two victory, the 2-0 edge. We're headed to a quick break. And we'll be back with the control. Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Presented by USAA Insurance, easy insurance for stuff in real life. Can win it here. Rocker can take the map, take the series, dominate the North with these final eight points. Scrambling in is Ultra. Can they get in? Can they slow it down? Can they get to a map five? They can't do it. It's a rocker victory.
Land is about to be back. And we could not be more excited. And for these teams, you know, you want to be in the best position possible. Heading into our first time back to land with, you know, the global pandemic and everything going on trying to battle for first place. But Joe, you were touching on control and how important it's been for squads this season, especially for, you know, a win like Ultra. They've been very, very good. I mean, if you just look at the major runs that Ultra and FaZe have had, it's, you know, come behind control has been a big point of that. And uh, 22 and 11, that's second. But if you take out stage one where they were two and six, they're 20 and five since stage two in this game mode. Been one of the best control teams in, you, know, you, you take a look at NYSL, what they did in stage three. It was an obvious weakness, but it, it ain't better here in stage four. Still not where they want it to be. Well, yeah, I think that's one of the things uh, I said maybe back at the major. Like, I was impressed how quickly search and control started to improve. Uh, you know, they were instantly very good at hard point with Hydra, but the other two, one, it was on Hydra to improve and really is the core of this team to get better at it. And they, they have found improvements, but the question is still there. Has it gotten good enough to consistently beat the likes of Ultra and FaZe? Like, that is their biggest competition. That's the biggest question. Yeah, that's, that's the question. And, you know, two and two in stage four, or one and one on Garrison. Uh, you know, and again, throughout the year, they are 11th in defensive rounds. And Ultra can be a team where, especially on attack, they, they take their time. They're able to just execute at those right times. They're eight and two on this map, two and oh in stage four. Uh, so a very strong map for Toronto Ultra. Well, you, you and I talk a lot about the attack versus defense. And, you know, with Mutineers, we talk about their defensive struggles in search. But it's a little bit different of a conversation when you talk control. And how typically and historically the couple of years we've had control, most maps are favored for the defense. What do you think leads to a struggle specifically on that side of it? Uh, I, I think, you know, they've played 30 times. Uh, they've got, you know, raid, 12 of those. So you lose some defensive rounds on raid, that's okay. But the big focus for me is kind of on checkmate and garrison, right? Where they're three and three and, you know, checkmate where they're five and seven. It's just like those defensive rounds, they have to be able to, you know, not get three to four dead at the same time, have effective trades. And with, the, with Mac, though, a form that he's been on, that should happen. It's just got to get better from the rest of the team. Yeah, sort of, you know, we were highlighting... You mentioned earlier, but like especially in the control, where there was a couple spots where Cell kind of bailed them out, last alive, gets a few kills. Mac with that multi kill stat and hard point, yeah, it could be massive here. If you know they have one or two alive, and he's able to find that, how huge it could be. But yeah, we'll focus on their defense. They're obviously starting off on the offensive side of things, but when we get to the defense, we can maybe see what's going on. Can they strike first on offense? Clay making it work early. Yeah, want to find some kills. Ultra just very disciplined. They're just controlling top green, making sure they don't rotate over to A, and then off spawn. Here comes Bans and Kleenex. Fighting right on back through as the nades connect. But I see him. He's going to win that one-on-one, -on -one, get right on to A. Just put a lot of pressure on Ultra, but inside with a nice gunfight, Win says, I'll take care of this. Yeah, the pressure didn't last too long, but Hydra has gotten into top green, so now you've got to make some decisions currently if you are Ultra. And I think it was Kleenex gets very aggressive bottom side. But he's not able to stagger the push at all. He gets caught almost instantly as the seam gets right back to work off spawn. It's a contest on B. Your offensive forces split a bit. Ants has still been holding on A this entire time, just expecting that push to come. He just hasn't quite developed. Well, I mean, that's the advantage of uh, controlling top green on offense. You never know when they are going to swing out of that room and maybe transition back to A. They can just go right up catwalk stairs. So Vance has to be very patient there. And you're going to see, look at the purple arrows. Who's the next one up? It's Cammy. He's going to rotate to that spot. He's going to make sure they do not lose that, that position as well. There is some trades going down. It's still a contest. Ultra down two lives with 27 seconds remaining. With this little time, I mean, this is really the big moment for NYSL. Yeah, you'll probably have another chance at it, but... You don't want to get staggered. And that does happen with Clay dropping. The other player is going to have to step it up. At bare minimum, keep this contested as long as they can. Until the full brunt of the squad gets there. Two kills through. Ooh, almost three. Inside is able to find both. So, big sequence there. Now, this is the desperation moment. This is going to be the final push for NYSL as we dwindle towards the 10 second mark. Here comes the big push. You've got the numbers here. The squad is ready, but there's a team kill that comes in. Hydra also finds one. It might collapse now for Ultra. 
Insight trying to go big. He's just lurking right underneath him. But they're going to have to give up B. Big plays there by NYSL, and you're, you're probably aided big time by the team kill. Yeah, and you can see Insight. I, I mean, he's hoping that he was on four in a row. He's hoping they get them into a trap, and he can find a, a kill or two going into an offensive round. So he could potentially get streaks. Hydra has lurked this entire time. He's up to five. You know, you would love to use those streaks to have the advantage on an offensive round if you need them. But Insight's going to go down in Hydra. They just forgot about him. They forgot oh, yeah. about him. Yeah. He's able to get through. Now it's just on Bance to hold the line, and he's doing a great job. Huge stuff there from Bance. Just make sure that's not a fast push over to A. But, yeah, I was going to say, I was looking at Bance's arrow, and I was like, well, his movement's going to determine whether or not they know Hydra's gotten through. <laughs> you can tell he was not prepared to be shot in that sequence. So, yeah, just one of those situations. I don't know, Joe, if it's the comms or what goes wrong, just the madness of it, but they lose one. Well, it's just, you know, you, you never know. Uh, you know, someone says, yeah, I, I got him, or you just haven't seen him in a while, so they think he's on the, the offensive side. But they're able to recover. Bansko goes big in the middle of the map where things got a little bit crazy. Then YSL, they were able to get that time extension, but not much after that. Yeah, and that Bance play, I mean, not only does it stop what could have been that fast transition, but just because of the lives department, too, it kind of shuts down the round. I mean, if he just drops there... Who knows? You've got, a, you've got a big shot to make a play for NYSL. Now they don't give inside streaks, and, and then here's this round. Can NYSL respond back? This is where they have to be better in control overall. Keep them in these games, and we've seen Ultra go up 2-0 in these positions. They're very good. They're very disciplined. If it, there's 10 to 15 seconds left, they'll make that last team push. We've seen it time and time again on this map. Vance is just trying to hunt down Hydra. It's an awkward fight, but finally he'll get the melee on in. It stays about even as far as the opening trades go. So no big opening offensive position. You haven't been able to get aggressive on defense either. You're sort of still at step one here for either side. Yeah, Vance is lurking, trying to see if he can find a kill through the rotation. Mac able to read it. Nice job. Making sure nobody gets through. That kill, I thought I seen. Maybe going to find a really good time, but Matt continues. This he's now on three in a row. Hydra is lurking on up. Clay's right around that tank area. Now they have this, this position. Did Bant somehow, okay, I say, did he just jump over someone's head? He does. They have kept Ultra pinned in, just gave them no opening. And, you know, this is, we're looking at one matchup here. Uh, but we talk, you hear a lot in the NBA about matchups, especially at elite level to top teams. So it's big ball, small ball, how, like, a team can be a nightmare matchup for someone. Do you wonder if Ultra, just considering the 2-3-5 and being a pretty good hardpoint team, it's just one of those squads that's just going to be a really, really difficult matchup against the skill set of NYSL? Um, I mean, I think it, potentially. I, I just think that, like, if, you know, NYSL, they, they're a good enough search team where they should be able to win one. Uh, the, the key difference here is... It's the control. If the control does not get better from them, that's where they have that one advantage. Because it seems on six in a row. But yeah, here, you know, it just comes down to maps. Garrison, very strong uh, for Toronto Ultra. But it, there's teams like Atlanta Face. Uh, this kind of the same thing. Where these smaller maps come into play, how good of a control team it phase is, it's going to be the same, same thing for them. Yeah, certainly. But that that was a great defense there, right? Like they, they give up nothing. They'll take the edge when thinking about a you know a game five or round five defense if it were to go to that. So the defensive woes maybe for the subliners team not shown there. Beautiful stuff, and we'll stick with a seam off the opening break as he is fourteen and eight on six in a row, and just four and away currently in the lobby leading the way. A big game out of him so far. We'll see if he's able to find some streaks. Where can he find a one-on-one? -on -one? Try and get top green control. Nice nade. That gives him some info. He's hoping to back down that player and then maybe see something. Bottom middle. He's just trying to find it, and Cammy's able to win it. A big gunfight win from Cammy. Slows down some maybe crucial added utility. For NYSL, but now you've gotten to your spots. At least on the A side of the map, there was an opening 
from what I saw, maybe fly through through B and you'll see those purple arrows start to track back and, well, insight one of them on your screen. But where these gunfights are going down currently, you gotta feel pretty good if you are ultra, is Cammy has been alive through all of this. He's continued to finesse in that top garage. They finally the picked him up. All right, so they finally pick him up. The only good thing for NYSL is they had someone pushed out vent room, right? So, you know, you can flank that player on caution. But he's able to find that kill. When you have vent, vent control, you get right onto the point and get on that contest. So, you know, if they would have lost that area, that's when you're trapped. That's when you can't get out. And, yeah, great job by Cami, Staying alive. It was the other side of the map that they just did not have control of and allows NYSL to get out to B. Yeah, well, they ended up running into that kind of, I think it was three down, which they just wisely give it up. Let's set up for our A defense. Now, can they hold this first push? And you feel all right. I mean, lives-wise, you're all right. You got, you got that one life advantage if you're ultra, and that can start to swing quickly depending on how this first push goes. Beautiful stuff from Cammy. I think Vance actually finishes it with the nade. Insight will then pounce. The last guy here is Clay. Clay does get two, which will help kind of keep Ultra honest, not allow them to push up the map as much as they'd like. But I think Vance has gotten a bit aggressive. Yeah, they just kind of leave him. One player leaves him. Uh, that was Vance, who was on A. He just gets out to top Karina. He's just cutting off reinforcements. Ooh. The rest of the player is going to focus on Clay. There is some players in position here for NYSL. Maybe if Hydra finds that kill on the Kleenex, they can get the pinch on the Insight. Kleenex is able to win that gunfight. So what, you've gotten zero points of ob objective if you are ultra. Six now, because you got beat both times if you're subliners. So you're not in a good spot if you're ultra with regards to maybe a defense in that round five. If we even go there. Oh, it's 15 yeah, seconds left. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, unless they win it, that's correct. They could take it, and then that, that conversation ends. Five seconds to go. Somebody's got to get on the point. Hydra, not able to take down both. Clay going to be the last man really in position with the contest. They'll push it out. They'll take him down, and Ultra will hold as the story of defense continues so far on Garrison. And they just don't ever uh, really allow that big play to happen. Um, even when Clay is out at A, they know exactly what they have to do. Uh, Bans just gives them the calm. I'm going to push up the middle of the map, cut off the reinforcements. Amy's able to wrap on back. He waits for Insight to come on through. They challenge a 2v1, and then they get their setup and their position from there. And I, I just like the discipline to... I mean, they only had, like, one person... I think pushed up when they went like three or four down. Like it wasn't moving very fast on B and they had a one life advantage, but just the discipline to be like, all right, screw it. Let's post up, set up. We don't need to throw lives away. Just good discipline. And they end up getting the round win behind it. I'll see what kind of opening they can have on offense. So that's going to be two down very quickly. Make it three, that's make it four. four. Uh, Hydra stays alive for a bit, but wow, what a sequence to start things off here from Ultra. And yeah, as you said, the round five won't come into play if uh, they win this round. Yeah, it's one of those situations where, where if Hydra maybe goes down a second earlier, they're able to wrap out onto A. They're just going to get the minute. No one's died. They have the life advantage. Two minutes and ten seconds to work with. They can take their time. Go for a couple of spawn kills. But Cammy and Insight, they're going to find two. Insight's on another six spree. Now they're out onto the zone. It's Clay and Mac off with spawn app. Fans to deal with inside of breaks. But Hydra goes for the flank through Catwalk. Can't get the multi-kill, but I think just gives his teammates... Enough time where they can come off spawn, regain position. But how has it changed things for Ultra when, you know, it's so clean to get the opening point? You have so much time in the life's advantage. Like, it's got to change your plan of attack a bit for the point. Yeah, I think maybe they just, well, you know, you don't want to lose map control, but maybe they slay around middle of the map. They throw an extra push or two over towards bricks, but, you know, they get top green right here pretty clean, so... This is like, well, I'm just going to step out onto the point. This opens up things in the middle of the map for Bance. Well, there's the streak coming in from Insight. Mac will end up dropping behind it. You've still got numbers here for NYSL. My shots from a seam to take one down top green. Kleenex the next up the bat. There's just too many NYSL players in front of him. You've still got what? It was, what was it? Four or five lives they had the advantage of when you first popped the A. Still up three, but about 45 seconds or so have been off the clock. 
It's not a lot, though. It feels like a lot longer, and that's just right, the fact right. that they've, they've had some contest time. Uh, usually, we see Ultra, when they get into this position, they don't typically lose it, but here we go. Two players on it. The nades are in. Asim just able to slide on in. Kleenex now trying to stay alive. He's on 5 HP. They've done it a couple of times. Ren YSL, they've had to get on the point, and they've done it. But I think mean, there's just too many members here at Kleenex. He puts the game away. I thought they were in a hole. Once Max Trophy was getting kills, I thought they had it, but the bodies were there. The shots were on point. Ultra closed it out on the offense to take a 3-0 victory. And yeah, I mean, it's not all on the opening, but when you get a clean four down like that, you take like a five life advantage and you get the opening point so fast. Like you've got two, what, 215, 220 to work with. It just feels like this never ending battle if you're on the NYSL camp. Oh well, yeah, I mean, they never give up map control ultra. And it's just the fact that they just say, hey, let's not go Freya. We'll just go to be, get that time extension and then we'll play around our executes. And they do just that. We've seen some teams maybe go for that extra. Let's try to two-two split and get a tick or two. And sometimes it doesn't pay off. They don't get either. Uh, they stick with one point, they get that objective scoreboard. I mean, uh, you know, damage wise, everyone's kind of there, but it seemed the only player positive for NYSL on the other side. It's so balanced on a Toronto Ultra. You see why they're such a good control team, undefeated throughout stage four. Well, let's let's just think about a couple of things here. Uh, one, after the Mutineers lost for Ultra, you go, what, 12 and 0 in map count, which is incredibly impressive from Ultra. Uh, the other thing, I, it, it may be a weird sort of revenge, but you lose to Mutineers to start off. You also had control of their fate here. By winning this, you knock them into the lower bracket side of things, and Empire will get the winner's start. So, I don't know if they're really thinking about that revenge, but you get it. <laughs> you get it in some fashion, Joe. No, 100%. But we're going to take a look at our scuff play of the game uh, throughout that control was, uh, yeah, you, you kind of said it. I mean, Toronto Ultra, they do what they have to do. They bounce back, but it's going to come in this round number four. It's this last play on A to win this match. And you, you have some map control here through the middle of the map. But this is where Toronto Ultra is so good. There's some machine guns right around this bricks area to be so strong. And who is it this time? It's Kleenex, who just plays his life, waits for his teammates. And when he's able to regain, that's when he makes the play. Dude, when a seam got in, and I think it's a trophy kill. Yeah, Max trophy kills Bantam. I go, oh my God, they're going to do it. They're going to get in again. Even if they do, though, the problem is, Joe, there's a minute 20 on the clock, and there's only like ten or nine or 10 lives left for NYSL. So even if they held on there, who the hell knows how it goes? But the fact is, they do not ultra get in. They make the plays. It's a clean offensive round win. It is a 3-0. Let's look at their road to the major. And as we've said multiple times, starts off with an L, and then 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. Yeah, I mean, and uh, they lock up that number one seed, NYSL. They don't get that buy. And it's tough for Florida. I mean, Dallas bounced back with Vivid, but for Florida, it was such a hot start. And just talking about their improvements, you thought they were going to start in the winner's bracket, but doesn't happen. The NYSL side, uh, it's a really, it's another solid stage. They're in the winner's bracket. The goal now, maybe win a major. Yeah, and I don't think you have anything to worry about if you're in YSL. You could still make that run, but perhaps some things to work on, some VOD to review with what went wrong in that Ultra Series, as I don't think they saw a 3-0 coming. But two teams that will absolutely be battling towards the end of our Major 4. We can't wait to get to it, but what an impressive 3-0 it is for Ultra. They're here to stay. They're here to battle for another victory. We had to break before our final match for the night.
Call of Duty League is presented by T-Mobile, now America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Zenny, the official eyewear for the CDL. Armor your eyes with Zenny Block's blue light protection glasses by visiting zenny.com forward slash gaming. Well, it's going to be drinks on Dallas Empire for Ultra as they do just seal the deal with a golden ticket into the winner's bracket mm -hmm. for them at their own major. Amazing stuff. This is the Group B standings right now, guys. This is how it's looking. Toronto Ultra secured first seed. New York Subliners, I would say just short of the first seed, but really that was quite a dominant performance out of Ultra. They yeah. do take second seed respectfully. And you can see there Dallas Empire edging out Florida Mutineers into that winner's bracket both three and two but the tiebreaker produces the goods really really exciting match my goodness i i gotta say now lads i was not expecting that type of dominance coming out of ultra not just because of how they've been playing recently they've been playing great but coming up against new york subliners like that oh my goodness just before lan holy smokes we're in for yeah. a ride gents i want to know what you guys are thinking stud what uh, what did you make of that series uh, that series was uh, insane from from start to finish. The fact that Ultra just came out and made New York look like they were in a top three team, that's just something I wasn't expecting. Ultra played probably the best Call of Duty we've seen them play ever since they played against Atlanta Face. They ended out stage four on a 3-0-3-0-3-0. Like, that's insane. <laughs> total map count. Toronto are definitely the top two team in this game. Absolutely. Uh, I'll be honest, I underestimated the Toronto Ultra. They are absolutely disgusting. I was starting to put New York in that second place spot, just having them solidified there, but what yeah. Toronto just showed us was excellence, man. Cami especially, the guy was going off. Their chemistry is completely on point, and they're continuing to get better. I mean, they had that first match. They're a little bit, you know, out of whack, and then since then, you can see right here, they have been frying, dude. Wow. And you know, something we also need to mention is how tough this group was. I mean, you got Florida Mutineers yeah. who placed fourth in the group, right? So for Toronto to top this group, I mean, that speaks volumes about this team and how good they've become. It really does. And if you just look at the, the loss there against Florida Mutineers, it was three and two. The rest of their victories mm -hmm. yep. have been straight three and donuts. That says something about a team. Uh -huh. That is stunning, stunning stuff. And look, hey, look, you can have one bad day where you're just not feeling it. You don't show up. But to get three and two as well with your only loss, pretty damn good, I, I say so myself. I am so excited about this Ultra team heading into LAN. Now, gents, I know you have been cooking some things up while you were watching the series, and I can't wait to get into it. Now, Stud, I know that you were looking at the hard point. You were checking it out. Uh, what did you find out about it? Yeah, so I said in the beginning of the day that the way Ultra come out and win this series is they come out hot in that very first map and take that hard point from New York. And that's exactly what they were able to do. This game went all the way down to the wire. As you see off that P1 rotation, a couple players from New York are starting to push up, trying to flip these spawns to get that favorite side for that P2. They find both of these kills, eliminating Kleenex and Insight from this back. So now New York has secured the spawns. Toronto, they have to try to break in, but you see that clock, it's starting to come into play. Insight knows it's time to use that streak. And at the same time that he pops this streak, Two of his teammates pick up kills. So now that only leaves one player on this hill, which is going to be Clayster. He just takes his sweet time because he knows New York is still going to be spawning in the back. They find that kill. They're still picking up kills around the hill to try to get New York to spawn out. But they just do such a great job at just keeping New York off of this time. You see a couple players in Bantz winning huge gunfights onto Hydra right there. He'll eventually help his team to flip these spawns, to spawn New York all the way out. And the good thing about the Ultra is that play clock definitely came into play. They realized that all we have to do is just slay them around this hill. We don't even have to hop it. So you see Bantz being aggressive towards that top wing, still picking up kills left and right. Inside eventually picks up the fire spree and they just get off that hill. And that's exactly what Toronto Ultra were doing perfectly that entire first map is to make sure that they were using their teamwork to execute those plays. Definitely. I mean, the one thing that I noticed there was their placement of each other, their teamwork, their communication had to have been stellar to execute a map like that, especially against New York Subliners, where we know they excel in Hardpoint, they excel in their respawns. Yeah. So absolutely incredible for them to be able to do that. I felt like they were just like flipping in the gaps. When somebody was in trouble, someone else slid in and managed to clean up the kill. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, a true showcase. Now, Nameless, I know you were checking out Hello. the S&D. Yeah, that's right, folks. Two 
two analysis clips for you guys. You know, we love you over here. <laughs> and what are you cooking, man? Yeah, let's take a look at the search and destroy. That was a wonderful search, especially from Cami. The guy was just rogue on the map. He's doing his own thing early in the rounds, grouping up with his teammates late. Uh, he had a big one-on-one -on -one clutch, and then he had a big round right here early on to sort of set the table here for the, the rest of the map. All right, so you're going to see Toronto Ultra. They do this A push. Uh, they have number two that's going to be Bant. He goes for that bomb plant. Kleenex pushes up, gets inside the train. I like the idea here, right? Just an all-out A push. You have one player on the island watching the flanker, getting ready to make his own play. Kleenex actually gets easy red here by Hydra. And when he died here, I thought this was was going to be yeah. the collapse of the round like they would push up and just overwhelm them on the site but what you're going to see is this cami here he makes such a heads up play he pushes out he's taking his time right he's checking everything all down low near the elevator gets that kill on asim and that redirects the attention of, of clayster to look back towards ticket now clayster's out of the play meanwhile the rest of the ultra players they get in a scuffle over near the site win a gunfight and cami goes in for the easy two-piece cleanup it was just a wonderful play out of the toronto ultra and especially cami making that heads up play to push up on that pinch i know there are a lot of teams that are watching that are like, okay, if we're going to wrap back for this bomb, we got to look out for Cammy from here on out. So maybe they have to come with a different look next time. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, and just I... to tag on that, Cammy. Oh, I'm sorry, Lottie. No, just to good tag day. on that, Cammy, he was really just that S&D player that took over this map. Like, you saw it in that clip right there. He was that island player, eventually flanks and gets a three-piece. The next round, he ended up picking up an ace, doing the same exact thing. And the reason why he looked so good on that map is because he was shutting down the island player for NYSL, which was Clayster. Clayster's always that guy that's going to be playing separate from his team and always trying to hit that flank, trying to set up a play for his teammates to try to help them to eventually pinch out those players. But that's just one thing that Cammy was doing so great. It's just winning those one-on-one -on -one engagements versus him and then eventually setting up the pinch for his he team. He was locked, yeah. Definitely. And you know what? I think the yeah. communication, again, I keep saying it for this team, must be stellar because I feel like with the info that they're giving each other, you know, like you said, when somebody dies, they're able to literally take that information and execute it perfectly, turn it into a play, which I think is amazing to be able to to kind of regain on maps like that is, is pretty stellar. Um, gents, I'll tell you what, though, we need to go to break because we have Bants coming up after the break uh, and we will be seeing him for Game two, victory spotlight. I'll see you guys in a few. Call of Duty League is brought to you by GameFuel. Unlock a CDL team pack with any purchase on GameFuel.com forward slash CDL while supplies last. Offer ends on August 31st. Tournament audio and team listen-ins are powered by Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the Call of Duty League.
Hello everybody and welcome to your Game Fuel Victory Spotlight. Joining me I have Bance from Toronto Ultra, of course. Bance, mate, that was absolutely ridiculous. What a showcase you guys just put on for all of us here against New York. What statement do you think this win really makes for your squad heading into LAN? Um, I'm not too sure because like New York are a really good team. Uh, they've had a lot of things go wrong recently, like out of game, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but I feel like we're just saying that we're still as good as we were in stage two. We're still as consistent. Um, we're still like playing as good as a team because like New York are a team that like really test your teamwork because they are probably like the best when it comes to teamwork. So mm -hmm. like to beat them, you guys have also got to be on your game working together. Um, so we kind of proved that we still got that. Yeah, definitely. I also, I totally understand what you mean about New York, but they still are a pretty nasty team, like you mentioned. Uh, speaking about who you stack up against, though, I want to know how you feel about FaZe, because I feel like FaZe right now is still kind of that team to beat in terms of their track record. I want to know what you guys are thinking heading into LAN, whether or not you stack up against this Atlanta FaZe team. Um, well, when we lost to them, we lost 3-2 uh, both times. Um, and it was kind of our searches that weren't that very good. Um, so I feel like we've been working on that and we've also been trying to like expand our map pool I feel like we're getting there with hardpoint. I feel like we're very comfortable on most hardpoints now Because like before we were just like yeah, we'll just take out Moscow because it's most people's best maps But now we're like happy to leave it in. Um, and just things like that to be honest working on our hardpoints. I feel like most most times we go like 1-0 down against like the the top uh, teams yeah, absolutely. I tell you what, there's always still work to be done. I think that's what makes you guys such a solid squad. Um, now, I have asked this question in many different ways, in many different forms, but I suppose the best way to ask this one to you guys is, do you think heading into land gives you guys an advantage uh, as opposed to online? Mm, I mean, I don't know, to be honest. I feel like <laughs> land, like, is it like... I don't know. It, that's a hard question to answer, to be honest. I feel, yeah. I feel like we're just going to be the exact same on land because I wouldn't really say our play style is pure gunfights. I feel like our play style is like work together as a unit. And I feel like regardless of if you're on land or online, if I'm with someone else and we're in, in, in a 2v1 against you, we're probably going to win it. You know what I mean? Um, if, if, we, if we were just like that team where it's like, you're playing solo chows and stuff like that. I, I'd I'd be kind of worried, but I feel like we've worked on our teamwork a lot, so I'm not really that um, nervous or anything for them. I totally feel you. That's exactly the answer I was looking for. You guys aren't just about the slaying power. It's so much more than that when it comes to the Toronto Ultra team. Bance, thank you so much. Congratulations. Incredible, incredible job. Secured first seed heading into the major. And best of luck. Thank you. There we go, Benjamin Bantz, he has spoken. Uh, and I tell you what, we have one more match coming your way today and it's gonna be our marquee match and it's LA Thieves going up against Optic and this is a big, big game. There's a lot on the line here. Will the green will do it or will our home series team take away the dub?
welcome to the Game Fuel Marquee Match. We've got an exciting one. Optic Thieves in the final match before we get back to land. Joe, let's talk about what's at stake because it gets interesting. I mean, Chicago just went. Uh, you get second place. You have the tiebreaker over Rocker. Uh, if you lose, that's where things get interesting. I'm not going to go through every tiebreaker, but if you're a Thieves fan, there's still a shot uh, Yeah, for top three. You have to win 3-0, though. Yeah, that, I think we were kind of surprised to see they still had a shot considering how this year has gone. But yeah, they'd have to get it done in 3-0 fashion. That's the main thing we'll focus on on the other side. Optic, get a win. You're in winner's bracket. And Joe, you think it's really important for this team considering you know how bad they want to get back to land. They haven't been in the form they want to to get the best start they can. 100%. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously that loss to Seattle Surge, it hurts them. It puts the, the pressure on them. Now they, they're still a very good team. They should have an advantage over LA Thieves, who's again has a new roster. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you want to start in the winner's bracket. They have all this confidence, and you would love second because what you're going to play Dallas instead of what in, in NYSL if you end up finishing third. If you don't finish third, you're in the loser's bracket. Yeah, no, 100%. It's a big one. And I think there's a lot of pressure on our game field feature player who is going to be formal. Um, if you've been in any of the listen ins or listened when we popped into them as of late, uh, He's making a lot of the calls. He is their in-game leader, at least in the bits we've heard without question. Uh, he's going to have to perform when it comes to stats today. He's going to have to be on point with the comms. They need to come in. They need to close this out. They can't fall apart if they go down early, which I feel like they've done at times. Yeah, it feels like there's these times when they kind of panic. And I think you need Formal to, to be that vocal leader to say, hey, like, let's slow things down. Let's get together. You know, when we see some of these more disciplined teams, uh, that's what they're doing. But here's just a look at the stats. You know, in Hardpoint Control, he's been great. Search and Destroy 36, but they've gotten better at better in Search and Destroy. Now, the Control is a 1.08 here, but throughout this stage, he has struggled. He has a 0.62 in that category. So, uh, fact is, just for formal, he's got to pick up that slide. Yeah, we'll see if he can begin to pick that up. They need a big performance from him today and really from the entire crew if they're going to get the win. But let's meet our squads and get ready to get into it. First off, let's meet Optic Chicago. Bristol mighty keeps it going formal. Looking fantastic. Envoy slaying his way through. Stop from up high, the king. I'm out here doing what they think is irrational. Really starting to run that score up. I'm gonna make it back, back. I'm gonna make it back, back. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Optic game in a back. Chicago are a force to be reckoned with. Now, Joe, you mentioned they should have the advantage when you think about the fact that, well, yeah, it, Thieves have been changing rosters all over the place. They've you know, got one roster under the belt with the new squad, but does it also make it a little bit more difficult for this Optic team to prep for this matchup? Well, I mean, I, I would think so, but the fact is, is you just stick to your fundamentals. You stick to your basics and the system that you've built. The other side is trying to put that system together. Yeah, no, 100%. We'll see uh, if they can do that. Stick to their strengths, come in, get the victory over a Thieves team that has been in disarray. But there was a lot to like from what we saw of Thieves recently. Slasher came back with a big impact. Can they get it going quickly? Because they really need a 3-0 if they're going to start off in winner's bracket. But the team has changed a lot lately. Let's take a look at the current lineup. Let's meet LA Thieves. Thieves suffer a painful loss. I mean, you saw from Kenny on Twitter, uh, that's you know that's just a really annoying one to lose. It comes down to a couple small mistakes. It's a game five, round 11. It has just about every moment you can ask for. Now here, they're looking to bounce back, and wow, what a magical 3-0 it would be if they could somehow do it. Yeah, come out of the top. Uh, yeah, you got Slasher back, you, uh, you have Hoop back in the lineup, and to me, this is just, I, I don't know how many more you know changes they can make. We're at the end of stage <laughs> four now, so it, this has to be it for me. Well, let's get to the keys to victory for this Thieves team, Joe. What were you thinking going into this? 
Oh, Kenny and Slasher, they got to bring it. Uh, obviously, you have a tough AAR matchup against, you know, Dashy and Informal, but these guys, they look good. Plus 40 across this year, as I know they lost it, but continue to build a, a system with this with this roster. Fix those small mistakes from their series versus Rocker. And went over that VOD. What can you change going to this one? And then Hook, he was a, a beast in the search for destroy. 20 and 11 in those two maps, especially standoff, which we're going to be seeing here today. But scum has been so good at search. Who can match that on the other side? Um, yeah, I'm thinking Hook. 100%. Well, good breakdown there. Now let's get to our game field keys to victory for Optic Chicago. Uh, step up is something in control. They're one in three in stage four. Scump is the only player positive. You need those other guys to step up. And then we talked about Formal. He's really struggling in this game mode. I think dashing Envoy right around a point nine. So Scump's been playing extremely well. Uh, and then I'm looking at Envoy and Scump to take advantage of the new submachine gun duo, right? They have a lot more chemistry. In, in, especially in Hardpoint, TJ has struggled there. That is where they could make the difference in the slay and then finally come out of the gates hot uh, obviously now we know that it has to be a 3-0 for la thieves so that adds a little bit more to it sometimes it's felt for this optic team like it's a team trying to survive their small mistakes but do you see this as one where they can actually take advantage of the small mistakes from thieves 100 percent. yeah i mean you know just you know stick to your fundamentals as i said but looking at the the maps and modes we're starting off with garrison hardpoint where we saw LA Thieves, they lost it to Minnesota Rocker in that map number one. See if they, you know, change some things. Standoff, Search and Destroy, both of our teams are undefeated throughout this stage. So map number two should be really fun. But yeah, I think, you know, there's going to be some things that Los Angeles Thieves, they're going to have to fix. Uh, we've talked about it. This, this league is too good now. There's talent all over the place. It comes down to being on the same page. But that takes time. It does take time. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how much they've improved. I mean, they had a good series versus Rocker, but is it enough to, I don't know, be able to beat Optic? Yeah, and it's just, it's interesting because, you know, we're talking about these small mistakes, and I guess they're a bit understandable for Thieves, where you've been changing rosters constantly. You don't have a lot of matches under your belt, but Optic should have the edge there. They should, being together the entire year, being able to limit that a little bit better. Yeah, it's just, it feels like for Optic when... Oh, things get a little bit out of hand. There's not sort of that slow down moment. It feels like they get staggered. Maybe you over a little bit. Uh, but we'll see. Can they bounce back from that? Or they just come out of the gates hot and, and win the series? Because obviously when they're on, when a player like Dashy's on, uh, they can just <laughs> win the game pretty easy. Well, this is one of those maps where he has taken over. Uh, you know, we, you'd see the low engagements and not really popping off on maybe like a raid hard point. On Garrison sometimes, I mean, he's the guy going 35 and 17. Like, he can have those monster games, but Scump's going to get team killed right out the gate. Thankfully, the ARs and Dashy and Formal able to pick up the slack, and they what get the? all four. All right, Dashy is off to a hot start. I do not know how he survived that from Hook, but he does. And yeah, you thought the team need was maybe going to turn into a spawn flip and a great start for LA Thieves. The ARs respond, but right off spawn, LA Thieves fight right back. TJ, he's going on a long flank. One of the reasons why they, they kept with TJ, he's a smart player. They felt like he can be the one to take the right routes, puts himself in a good position. And I know you focused on some things in the keys, uh, yeah, a lot of different points, but is there any particular matchup at like AR, Flex, SMG that you think is the key to victory here for the teams? I mean, for Opti, I think it's in the subs. Uh, I, I think that especially in Hardpoint, they should have a higher slaying ability with what we've seen from TJ this year than for... I mean, the LAD is I think Kenny and Slasher need to stay consistent. I think that will keep them in the game. Uh, you know, that was kind of with the last roster with Kenny and Draza, just what we saw. Well, let's see if they're able to do that. He had three in a row on Envoy and three in a row on Formal. Envoy will drop, but now at our second hard point, you've got Dashy set up deep. Just pinning him on the cross. Dashy set up deep, still pinning him on the cross as he is just chopping through him. Dashy. With another triple there, he is already out to eight and two, four in a row. His impact has been felt early in this one. And I mean, look at this scoreboard. I mean, a one or two and nine from your AR duo. Okay, so I, I mean, just right out of the gates, the slaying is there for Optic. And they set up this line where LA Thieves, they were pushing the back spawns. They give up their back spawns, does Optic. They get majority of the time and they set themselves up for this third hill. That was greatly done by Optic Chicago. Yeah, no, this is flawless so far. Good chunk of time. And now the rotation to next. And, I mean, look at this. Everyone's just sort of building their way out of mid-map if you're Thieves. You're going to get 
20 or so seconds here before the real pressure begins on the hard point. No one's had to shoot their gun yet in 10 seconds or off of this. Finally, the first fight comes in. Ombe will get caught. Now the pressure to the remaining three players. He will spawn out, so a pinch will develop if they can hold the rest of these fights. But you have numbers here for a moment if you are thieves and they're able to burst through. A nice break, but you still have a presence here from Optic. Finally clean, and I'll just say Dashy, you're right, he doesn't ruin that push with a multi-kill, but he's making a push of his own right now as he finds another three, make it four. This is what we talked about at times. It just feels like, I don't know, maybe it's what he knows is on the line, and the rivalry adds a little bit more to it, but my man is fired up. Uh, yeah, no, he is not really missing many bullets right now. That is absolutely the case with the host of our current home series in Thieves. They've got to get a 3-0 if they're going to get a winner's bracket start. Let's go to an Astro Listen-In with Los Angeles Thieves. He's on me mid, on me mid, on me mid. He could go right, he could go right. He could go right, he could go right. He could go right, he could go I spawn here. Oh, what's back left? What's up, green? Can we 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 can it's Brandon, it's Dashy, Dashy. He's in the rails, 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 rails. Top green, top green, top green, rails, rails, rails. Nice one. Yo, yo, I'm going to break. I'm going to break. I'm going to break. I can help you, man. 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 I can help you, I can look over oh, here. No, 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 no